Here are five of the biggest lies told by Amberlynn Reed. We're also saying that Becky paid for the ring and I want to, or that I paid for the ring and I just want to say that Becky actually paid for it. She gets commissions for her art. So I don't know. That just like made me sad that a lot of people were just like, oh my God, you paid for your own ring. Da, da, da. It's almost like even if I did, who cares? But I didn't. I bought the ring. Becky didn't. She didn't want to sell them anymore. She simply gave them back to me when she came over last week. I'm selling them and using the money for my outpatient. None of the reasons I started on Cameo. I guess it's it could be a little bit disrespectful in the sense of like, usually most of the time when people are getting engaged or married, it's like up to the guy or I guess I don't know how it works in lesbian relationships. I don't know to buy the wedding ring traditionally or maybe this isn't a wedding ring maybe this is just like a man promise rings are gay dude promise ring I don't, maybe that was a promise ring i knew a guy that had bought a girl that he had known right he was like in love with her at the time and he was like i'm gonna buy you this promise ring because she wanted it right really hard and he this was the same girl that he had told me had a giant clitoris and he refused to eat her out because it was like he said it was appalling to him when he first saw it he said it was like a thumb he said it was like a thumb like over her vagina and that he uh anytime he went down there like the first time he went down there and he saw it he was like nah because he told me that he could probably suck on it like like in his mouth or something like that you know like a like one of those things and he said that it was disrespectful to look at with his eyes and he never he never did it and that's pretty i mean in my opinion I don't, I don't know how i feel about that personally i've never been in a situation before where i was about to indulge in the female anatomy with my mouth and then had that like a giant clitoris i've never seen that personally but i think obviously women have different anatomies right some women have giant areolas and i've been told the bigger the areola the closer to god you are i don't know how truthful that is but maybe it applies the same way if you're a woman with a big clitoris now i'm not saying because some women have penises right like i've met some women that clearly tell me that they're most women on the internet are men like if i'm just going to be completely honest with you i've talked to plenty of women that i thought were upstanding citizens of society and then when I received a vagina picture, it was a BBC. And that's happened to me at least three or four times. And I'm not even joking about that. It's not something I I would want to brag about. It's just something that happens on the internet. And I think anybody that's been on the internet for any extent of time probably knows what I'm talking about. Most women are men. But anyway, um, he had bought this, this girl a promise ring. And then she had cheated on him like two weeks later. And then she had never given him back the ring. You would think that, you know, if, you're, if uh, he gave you the promise ring and he executed on his end. But she was not faithful on hers. And you would think that that would be like a, you know what I'm saying? Like a line of credit, almost kind of like you're you're indebted to somebody. And this is like a, you know what I'm saying? Like you would think that she would give it back, but she didn't give it back and whatever. I mean, I don't. I, why would you even lie about something like this? I mean, it's just to prove everybody wrong, I guess. Just to tell them like, hey, guess what? Becky does give, Becky does have my back. She did buy me the ring. It doesn't seem like that big of a deal to me personally. No, oh, she's on Cameo too? Okay, that's cool, bro. Uh, Cameo is like, if you don't know what Cameo is, it's basically like a service that you can hire celebrities or like other people to say a particular phrase or quote that you want them to say. You pay them a certain amount of money. $250? Damn, for a ring? I mean, is that a lot of money? Can somebody let me know? I'm, I, I don't, I've never bought jewelry before, like real jewelry, if that makes any sense. So I have no idea what the, what the price is for these things. $250 for something on your finger is kind of crazy for me personally. Well, I'm tired to pawn them. Well, I tried to pawn them and found out that they were basically worthless. So I'm not going to have someone pay for something that's worthless. This is why this is I always feel when it comes to jewelry and things like that. Like, I understand it's all about what that person wants. And I think that you should be catering to the person that you care about and what they want. Like, for instance, if me and you were dating and you got me a tie or something like that, like, I would have no use for it because I don't really like wearing suits and things like that. So you have to cater to what the person wants and not what you think that they should want, if that makes any sense. And a lot of times, jewelry, I know firsthand, I've met plenty of people that had tons of jewelry, and when times got rough, they tried to sell that jewelry, and it wasn't even worth a fourth of whatever they paid for it, because jewelry like loses its money as soon as you buy it or something like that. So I never really found too much value in it, right? 
And I'm, I'm more so like it when somebody has like a, maybe like art, or maybe you like doing your nails or hair or makeup and stuff like that. I'll buy you your weave. I'll buy you a wig. Because I know that stuff is like super cool. Even though a lot of that stuff is like really expensive. Damn, dude. Becky's killing it. After that, Becky announced the rings. The rings were worthless. So she decided to give them back to Amber. Our girl went on to post this. Three fifty. Three fifty, bro. Didn't we just see him for two fifty? Forty four dollars on a ring. No, this was not forty four dollars. But yeah, I'm scared to wear it because it was really expensive, and I don't want it to break. And it's so beautiful. And is it? Why did you lie about the engagement ring being real? I thought it was real. Becky didn't lie about the ring. I said that I said that I thought it was real, meaning when I looked at the website, I thought it was real, but I didn't care if it was if it was or wasn't. If you're buying anything ever, you should 100% authenticate whether or not it's the authentic piece of equipment, right? Am I wrong in saying that? I, anytime you buy anything online, you should be double, triple, quadrupling checking just to make sure this is what you're buying. 100%. Because if you accidentally click purchase and that shit comes to you and you just bought a JPEG or you just bought like, you remember when the PS4s were first like coming out and people were all over eBay trying to sell them. And then a few people, when the PS4s came out and they had bought them on, on eBay, right? People were getting them just the boxes because like in the description for that shit, it'd be like, yeah, PS4 brand new. And the description would be like, yeah, it's just a box. Like it's not actually the PS4. Can you imagine being like 14 years old and you're going, man, I'm going to play GTA 5. I'm going to be playing all these fucking great games finally. And then you get the fucking box in the mail. Your whole paycheck <laughs> is just gone because you got a box. Um, I do think that a lot of those people did get it refunded, but there's a lot of scammers out there nowadays and I would. 100% make sure that whatever you're buying is the authentic piece of equipment. The fact that she says she doesn't care, like, it's the pride, man. The pride, pride in some people is just, you do care. Don't lie. You wasted money. I'm gonna get to spend the rest of my life saying that Becky is my wife. That's, like, super special to me. You guys oh, man, you know what's so tough? is that when I see people that have like relationship channels and they're like super, super in love with that person. And I'm not saying that love isn't forever, okay? But I don't think so, well, a lot of the times. Most relationships fail. And if you're making like a content creation channel with you and another person and they're like your, your, your partner or your romantic connection in some way, uh, the amount of times, because most relationships fail, odds are if you're in a relationship right now, it's not gonna make it. Because 99% of relationships fail until you get into that one that lasts forever, which most of them are not. Most people have to build up to that final one. So if you're in a relationship with somebody and you're making this channel for you and this person and you break up, oh man, you said a whole bunch of shit that no longer means anything at all. Like this, like this particular thing, me and Becky are going to be together forever. We obviously know that's not the case, right? Amber broke up with her or Becky broke up with her and they're not together anymore. And Amber has a history of doing that. And... I personally think that if Amber was real deal serious about the people that she was in a relationship with, I think that it's totally fine to do that when you're like 21, 22 years old because you have no idea what's going on. You have like little to none, little to no real world experience and you have no idea how to like really navigate because like social media presence is like very new in the spectrum of humanity, right? There's nothing to really draw from. So you do have to bite the bullet a few times and put your dip your feet into the, the deep end of the pool and see what works to see what doesn't work. If something hasn't worked, how many times has this happened to her? Like three, four, five times already? How many exes has she had on social media? If you've gone through relationship after relationship after relationship after relationship on social media, maybe you stop doing that. Maybe you just stop posting about your relationship. Maybe just stop talking about your new relationship altogether. I mean, I personally think because Amber has been in so many different relationships and it seems like she just hops from one to another with like almost little little to no gaps in between. 
I think that she probably should just stay single for a good amount of time because our girl has a very hard time staying single and I think it'd probably be very beneficial for her to take some time alone, but she really doesn't like being alone is what, from what I gather. No, that her. when I announced my engagement, you guys saw that like I didn't yeah, see- Why does she look so purple in the face? What is going on with that? I'm as happy as like a normal like person would be and I kept trying to like tell you guys, no, that's not true. Like I am really happy. Like deep down in my gut, I, I wasn't happy like I should have been and like, I come on live stream a lot, and I try- I also think that these particular, like, why are you talking about this shit? You know, it's 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 one thing if the drama reached out from a different place, like, it leaked out, and then you have to touch on it, but why is Amber so incredibly forthcoming about the relationship stuff? It's, it almost always ends badly for her, and I, I can't think of a single other time that it hasn't end badly for her. She's It's like a constant thing of- a thing of- it's like her eating habits, man. It's like the amber cycle and it's like that for her relationships too like act happier than i really am sometimes and i think that's what i did with the whole like engagement thing is like i was trying really hard to be like yes i'm happy about this but i just felt i honestly didn't feel anything when she proposed what? and it's like it's so embarrassing but like i kind of like <laughs> this is so embarrassing to admit. here's tea you know how like when you're when someone proposes like you're supposed to like cry like i low-key like try to fake cry she didn't actually feel <laughs> what i'm getting from that is that she didn't feel anything really when becky proposed and that's tough man if you sh oh man dude if somebody proposes to you or somebody has like deep feelings for you and you don't reciprocate it doesn't have to be in the same way because people love in different ways and everybody's going to be different obviously like the way you feel about somebody is not going to be the same way that th that same person feels about you or at least the feelings are at least if they should align but if somebody feels more that doesn't mean that other person if they don't like display those same feelings in that same way that doesn't mean that they also don't love you or care about you or whatever but if amber's just straight up saying like i felt nothing <laughs> well well then fuck dude i guess maybe this whole relationship should, probably shouldn't have even happened at all and this is what i this is what i really hate about amber in these relationships is that i real deal don't think that she ever i don't i think she's probably had a few relationships i think she probably felt a pretty good deal for destiny but i think that when somebody is like very very easy to get into a relationship with the other person tends to take that for granted and they feel less for that because they didn't, there was no working involved, if that makes any sense. Because if you get into a relationship with somebody and it's just like that, like you just get in a relationship and you didn't have to work for it, there was no time you had to put in, it was just like one and done type thing, then I don't think, I think most people would take that for granted. I really do. And I think Amber is probably a victim of that because I've seen countless times and she's like straight out telling us right here that she didn't feel anything for it. Like if so, you would think this is like one of the greatest moments of your life, a proposal, a proposal, dude, that should be like top 10 in your life of the, th like a greatest achievements proposing. It should be like top 10 easily. Um, along with like that one Lego set when you got, when you were a kid, that time your, your foot fungus got cured. I don't know. But you get what I'm saying? Like there's a whole bunch of times in your life that a lot of people would look back upon with the best intentions. Like, Oh my God, my, this was like the best point of my life. And Amber just sitting there going like, I felt nothing. That's crazy. Obviously, they weren't compatible enough. Some people are just together for opportunity. And that's really tough for me to, to say sometimes because that's, I, I, I think that's what it is here. Today has been kind of a hard morning at the beginning because I noticed Twinkie was acting different last night. And it was just like little tiny things. Like usually when I come home, she'll like jump on me. Damn her. Ooh, man, she is really inflated here, dude. Like, a, like a, she was babysitting a beehive. Um, she likes to jump on the couch and jump onto our bed and stuff like that. And I realized she wasn't doing those things. Okay. And what got me really worried is you guys know how um, my bed is on the floor. Twinkie wouldn't even jump on that. She why doesn't she have her? Why does she have her bed on the floor? She can't like afford like a um. What are those things called? These things? It's like the metal foundations with the wheels on the bottom. Those are like sixty bucks, and you can literally you uh, you can have the same one. Like I got like five, uh, whatever those things are underneath like a bed somewhere in my house or like in a closet or something like that because like they they don't go bad. It's like it's not like they expire. The box springs or whatever the fuck those are called. I don't know, but they're like sixty bucks and they last forever because they're just metal pieces that you mount your bed on. Why does she not have that? Is it because she's literally so fat that she can't like they'll she'll break it? Is that really what it comes down to? Because like I've been in a bed before, like a big bed, and I've had two people on that bed. Okay, and we were doing extraordinary activities, and I never once thought that this was gonna break on me. Never. 
ever, and I'm not bragging about like sex or anything like that, but the point I'm making is like two fully grown people, which probably amounted to probably around 300, maybe some 300 and some change pounds. Well, I guess maybe. Well, I guess maybe. No, Amber is way bigger than that, right? She's almost double that weight. So maybe, I guess. I don't know. I can't, I can't relate to that. But does she mount her bed on the floor because she literally is so fat that she's going to break the... <laughs> is it like... You ever see that movie Norbit? And you remember Respucia? How she had to have her bed on like cinder blocks because the bed itself was like she was breaking the, the box springs or whatever? I'm really worried as you guys know how... And I also think that for somebody like Amber who has absolutely no right taking care of animals dude it taking care of an animal is is like you have to be very responsible and some animals are a little bit easier to take care of than others like for instance cats are pretty autonomous on their own they can do whatever they do whatever the fuck they want they're more like accessory devices um to your life compared to another animal like say for instance a doge or like a hamster or something you have to really take care of a lot of these other animals and you have to do a lot of other stuff with them but for like a dog especially, dude, you have to walk dogs. They, they have the, the poor quality of life if you're never taking them out and they're just fucking staying inside all day. For somebody like Amber, who can barely take care of themselves, and you're obviously seeing it. I mean, if you're walking around at nearly 600 pounds year after year after year, I, I, I struggle to find anybody that would say that this person is responsible in any way. I don't know why I see so many people in these circumstances having animals. Because like, dude, if you can't take care of yourself... What makes you think you could take care of one, two, three, four dogs, dude? What is up with that? That's not something I would recommend anybody. Like for me personally, right? I had a cat and I had a cat for like 20 years. And man, I love that cat, dude. Beautiful, amazing, majestic animal. On the last few years of that dude's life, it was a woman. But anyway, I had to take that dude to the vet like every six, seven months. Always something different, dude. Um, it was always a problem, right? And that sucked, but the point I'm making is like I had to be there anytime something came up and I had to like, okay, we gotta get the Uber, we gotta go to the fucking vet, and I'd go there. It was a lot of money, dude. Every single time it was like five, six hundred, seven hundred bucks. And my cat eventually died, and that sucks. But the point I'm making is like it, there's a lot of responsibility. And I would not put myself back in a place like that. I mean, for one, the emotional trauma of losing a cat is crazy, especially one that you had when you were a child. Um, but it's a lot of responsibility and I'm not like, bo I'm not like boasting. Like I'm such a great person for taking care of my cat, but I feel like if Amber is real deal, somebody that's responsible enough to take care of an animal, you would think that she would also be enough to responsible enough to take care of herself. But that's obviously not something that's happening. Um, my bed is on the floor. Twinkie wouldn't even jump on that. She went up it. That's not good. That's not good at all. Like super slow. She was in so much pain that she was shaking. So oh my God, that poor doggy. I don't really have like any 24-hour <laughs> okay. vet places, which is kind of dumb in my opinion because you never know what's going to happen at freaking 3 a.m. I've cried too much about it, <laughs> but I'm just like really worried and I hope there's something that the vet could say to make me feel better. Like, What is, what, what to make you feel better? Your dog is hurting, dog. Like... Who cares about you and your feelings? It's the projection. This person is, you know, what I love is like, you know, when somebody gets caught cheating and they go, I'm sorry, but it's like that famous Rihanna quote, like, you're not sorry you cheated. You got, you're sorry because you got caught. That's basically what I'm hearing here is like, instead of Amber saying like, oh, I wish my dog would feel better, whatever the fuck, um, she's, she's projecting herself. Like she's, you know, it is what it is. This guy right here is really beaten into her though with that. With that, yeah. Better. Sure. Your dog is hurting, dog. Like, is there no 24-hour vets? I don't know where she lives, but some places are like that. Like where I live, there's not a 24-hour vet. So if your dog or cat or something like that does have an illness, animals are not as well taken care of in terms of like, you know, I don't know, hospitals compared to like humans. Obvious fucking lead, dude. Most people don't give a fuck about animals, right? I knew a dude that used to just like recreationally drive on highways. He hit like three deer one time, and he said he just kept going. He didn't give a fuck. And so people don't really care about animals that much. I mean, granted, it's your, you would think you would care more about your own fucking animals. But, I mean, but then again, like, what I'm talking about, like, deer suck, right? Can we just agree on that? There's, like, almost no purpose for, like, deers. Like, the amount of times I've seen videos of deers just jumping off of, like, giant buildings for no reason. And, like, they look down. They see that it's, like, a, you know? And they just jump off. And, like, they'll just start swimming in this, like, river. I don't know. I've seen deers, like, looking at trains. The apex predator. Trains. They'll see a train coming, this piling, this massive, big, giant brick of metal, and they just don't give a fuck, and the train hits them, and they just, I don't know, they explode. I, 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 there's no other way, there's no other word to describe it than that. Like, they just explode out. And 
uh, I think deers just suck in general, right? They, you, they're gone for like six months out of the year. And when the, the temperature finally starts getting down, they come out of the forest. They're like half eaten. They're like emaciated because they're eating fucking leaves. And then they're, you know, then they, I don't know, they jump in front of cars. Like, what are you fucking doing, dude? Get your shit together, right? And same thing with turkeys. I don't know why so many turkeys are dumb to fight humans. Like, how many animals do you know? Like, some animals have, they can fight, they can fight humans, right? Like, for instance, if you're like a mountain lion or like maybe a kangaroo or a gazelle or something like that, you could probably fight a human successfully. But if you're a turkey, I'm beating you nine times out of ten. Unless you are a turkey with like brain capacity and a knife, maybe. But that's like a very extreme scenario. Anyway. What is, what, what to make you feel better? Your dog is hurting, dog. Like That guy's gay. Who cares about you and your feelings? Um, you guys probably are like, oh my god, why don't you wear makeup? Because, like, I've been... Who ca <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is kind of crazy, just coming out of nowhere with... So, yeah, like, my dog is having this big-ass problem. He's in pain constantly. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so, like, the reason why I'm not wearing makeup is, like, like where did that even come Instantly from? Instantly into herself, dude. Like, <laughs> I... She is a narcissist through and through. Like, I immediately after this whole entire sob story, that entire sob story was just to make you feel bad for her. That's really what that was about. True. I mean, and no 24-7 vets in Kentucky. I would... This is a girl who drove three hours at four in the morning to go to Cheesecake Factory <laughs> there and back. Is that true? So... Yeah. Damn, that's crazy as fuck, bro. Can you imagine justifying not taking your dog to the vet because you, but then you went to go to get Cheesecake Factory? Damn, what are the priorities there, dude? I wonder what kind of cheesecake she got from the Cheesecake Factory. Destiny, you're still here. Hello. That's why they're not going. That's why you haven't, because Dana and Destiny are there, and that's where your attention is. Oh, yeah, she did live with Dana and Destiny for a little bit of time, huh? But that shit is so depressing when I think back to the fact that she got broken up with Destiny, but she still had to live with them. For like a good amount of time because she she wasn't like a full grown adult or whatever man that is tough bro can you imagine being in one room and then all the next room over all you hear is like because you know what they're doing in that next room and you're just amber sitting there body slamming cheesecakes and shit like that your dog is on the floor crying and dana and destiny in the next room body washing each other man dude that's just got to feel real depressing oh but we're gonna go out to eat now too oh okay let's see chilies no 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 24 7 vet in somerset kentucky after hours emergencies during office hours call the regular clinic and be prepared to dial extension number 30 after hours the on-call emergency veterinary let's just keep it a buck amber didn't want to go she she thought it was much more important to go out to eat go wherever she was gonna go it, it, to go to walmart wherever she was gonna go dude than taking care of her dog. I mean, I don't know what kind of connection people have with their animals, but I know a lot of people think that a lot of animals don't really, they don't really care for you or whatever, dude. And that, I think it does depend on the animal. Like for instance, if you got like a hamster, maybe like they probably don't give a fuck about you. Or maybe you got like a, a gecko or a aardvark or something. I don't know what people have nowadays, dude. People got weird animals, right? But the default animal, which is either dog or cat, I can let you know right now, depending on what kind of cat you have, they care for you, dude. Cats are fucking awesome animals. They're super emotional creatures. They have a lot of expression. And depending on what kind of, how long you've had that cat and what kind of connection you have with your cat, they care about you. Dogs, too. 100%. Dogs will 100%. I think anybody will tell you about that. Amber has a dog, okay? And some dogs, I feel like, are more emotional than others. Little ones are kind of, like, really fucking annoying. I don't like those ones. I just kind of think if you're going to get a dog, you might as well get one that's, like, a normal sized dog and not one that's like so small that you might accidentally step on so maybe not those but regardless here let's just keep it a buck amber didn't give a fuck that's just what it is okay that's just what it is and can be reached after hours emergency fees will apply if your pet must be seen now let's see we're gonna put this in directions let's see Let's see where the Chili's is. The Chili's is a six minute drive to the hospital. I'm so, you know. Now people real deal get real deep in this Amber Lynn Reed lore, dude. How the fuck do you know exactly where she is? Look, okay, I'm invested in the Amber Lynn Reed situation and things like that. But to know the exact location of where she was eating and like the Walmart and all that sort of stuff, dude. I don't know, bro. I'm not saying this guy is like a bad person or anything. It's a little bit, it's a little weird. Dude, I'm not gonna buy this whole, we're worried sick, we'll go beyond, I'm the best, best firm. On oh, it's even on the same fucking road. Shocker. The next day. I got some questions about 
you should have taken Twinkie to an animal hospital. Like I said, we didn't have any of those near us. Crazy. Or I would have done that. I live this guy just said it was like 10 minutes away though, right? In a rural place and we don't have like a lot of what like other places have. Why was she supposed to stay home with the dog? If there wasn't a 24 seven place open, then there's not much she can do, but wait until the next day. Unfortunately, that is very true. If there was somewhere open, I would have went there as soon as I noticed it was happening because I care about Twinkie more than I care about myself. Was there an update on the dog though? Like what happened with the dog? Did she ever talk about that? Or does anybody know? Can somebody let me know down in the comment section when you're watching this video? Did the dog turn out okay? Self. Um, I made sure that before I left the house that she was cuddled and she yeah. had a good spot. I had food right next to her and water. And I'm just so glad. That she feels so much better today. It's like it never even happened. I mean, I guess the dog got better, I guess. She didn't take it to the fucking doctor at all, I guess. <laughs> okay. I mean, sure, dude. I, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't have done that shit. I, I was always in and out of the fucking doctor. I'm not trying to like virtue signal or like morally grandstand or whatever. There might have just been like the... I'm not here to like perfectly critique the thing, but it is 100% a little weird for her to go. My dog is suffering pain, problems all over the place. Anyway, we're going to go to Walmart. We're going to go to Walmart. We're going to go out to eat. That is a little weird. Hi. Um, my name is Amber Lynn and I wanted to start. Look how thin she looks here, dude. This, is, <clears throat> this has got to be from years ago. You know, it, she's not thin here in the sense of like, actually being thin but she's so much smaller than what i usually see her at right i mean her peak was she was almost 600 pounds or she could have much she might have been over that she is so small here and like just seeing the amount of girth on her face compared to where she is now is insane to me <clears throat> and i always tell people when they are losing weight like you you don't know what you look like until you lose weight right <clears throat> like if you've been fat for your whole entire life you have no idea because some people will go from their childhood into their teen years into their adulthood and have never lost weight, have never been at the weight that they should be at. And they've just been big and busty and just ginormous for their entire life. And that is really, really not satisfying for me because you you only have a, a finite amount of time to be the most attractive that you're going to be. Usually people say it's like from the ages of 18 till you're like 32, 33, 34, 35, depending on who you are. And some people will have a little bit more leeway. I met a lot of really, really hot people that are in their 40s. I'm not saying you can't be hot while you're in your 40s, but usually people will say your, or your 20s and early 30s are like the peak periods of when you are the most delicioso. And when I see people like Amberlynn, wasting their entire 20s, wasting their entire 30s, just doing nothing other than just becoming bloated and big and having ginormous bellies and things such and so forth. And I see there that they they could have beautiful traits, but you just don't know. And they don't know. They don't actually, they have never seen themselves, realistically speaking, ever in their entire lives because they just always have fat on them. Um, a YouTube channel for weight loss. I see a lot. Yeah, this is this is old. Other people doing it, and it's so motivating, and it's just something I'm really, really interested in doing. Um, she's so she's so like talking under her breath, like she's so like, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? She's so shy. She, she's so shy, and <laughs> it's so much different compared to the modern Amber we have that just talks and talks and talks, which is beautiful. I mean, it's great that she got better and better on camera, but I think it's so crazy how this girl, our girl started a weight loss channel and only managed to gain weight. How do you fail that hard? Like, how did you get, how, how did you fail that upwardly? That'd be like somebody trying not to be gay, right? Let's say you're dating somebody, you have a husband and that dude, he is just, he is loving penis. He loves penis. He's always loved penis. And I've always asked women this, like, could you date a man that was gay before you started dating? Like maybe he has sucked like 12 dicks in a year or something like that before you guys started dating, right? And most women hit me with, nah, I ain't doing that. If he's sucking more dick than me, if he's got more dick sucking ability than me, that's that's a red flag for me. I don't care if he's like the straightest man in the world or he's buying me MK bags and he calls me pretty every single day of his life and he no longer. And I always think like, I mean, I understand where you're coming from, right? Sucking 12 dicks in a year. I don't think it's that bad, but 
you know, then again, I don't really understand, I don't, I don't really understand the dick sucking ratios for a lot of people. So we'll leave it at that, right? But if you were dating a man and then you found out like you were, you were talking to him one day and maybe you picked up his phone and you're like, oh, let me, let me see what you're, let me see what you've been watching on your, you go through his history, gay porn, all gay porn. Like it's just gay porn, but you, you know, he, he, he has sex with you quite often and now he's just looking at gay porn and then you're like, uh, I'll forgive it. You know, it's like, it's just gay porn, oh, BBC extravaganzas, um, BBC parties, crazy, like double-ended BBCs, whatever, right? And then maybe one day when you guys are having sex, right? You, he's like on top of you and he's having sex, but you hear something in your ear, right? You hear like some moaning like, oh yeah, oh yeah. And then you're like, what is that? And he's like, nothing, nothing. And then he like, you look over and you see that he's watching gay porn while he's having sex with you. Like, what do you do? You know, like, what do you, in that scenario, if, you're, if your husband is watching gay porn, like, that's your only, he tells you, he's like, listen, babe, I got to be honest with you. I can't get erections. Like, your vagina is very appetizing. I love the female anatomy, but I just, I don't know what it is. Like, penis is just good. I just need that. And like, I can't get an erection. When I look at your vagina, that is gross. I need to look at some hot, B hot steaming BBC in order for me to get even somewhat erected. And it needs to be really gay porn. Like, what do you do in that scenario? Like, do you just break up the marriage? What do you have kids? Like, what if you're, what if Timmy is like, mom, why are you leaving dad? And you're like, he's fucking gay. He's, he can't, he's, he only has sex with me when he watches gay porn. Like, obviously you gotta leave him. Or maybe you don't leave him. I don't know. I'm just wondering what you would do. What are we talking about? I don't know. Um, I've been on a weight loss, weight loss journey for a very very long time you've now. been you've been the on that weight loss weight journey even longer dude it was when i was 11 years old i weighed 290 Two, the lowest weight you've ever weighed was 12 years old at 290 pounds that i have a friend i have a middle eastern friend who's a big busky burly beautiful man right he's a gorgeous man beautiful man he weighs like 230, 240, and he's six foot two, six foot three. Big dude, big man, hummus and all. And this dude looks good, okay? Can you imagine how this dude looking so big and so beefed up? And then Amber was a child that weighed more than this man. I, uh, that's just, it's sad, bro, because this is a full grown man. This is a big man, Middle Eastern man from Egypt. Pounds. During this current weight loss journey, I made it to 331. That was the lowest I did, and that was about a year ago. I think making these YouTube videos, it might make me accountable. So if you want to subscribe... It didn't. Damn, looking at this shit in retrospect, it only encouraged it. And it's crazy because you would think it would, because, like, people are now watching these videos, and they're going, okay, Amber said she's going to lose this weight in this time period. And then you come back a week later, and she's like, guys, guys, I, I did, I, I accidentally ate 40,000 calories two days ago. And another 50,000 calories three days before that, I gained weight. How much weight? Only 20 pounds. I only gained 20 pounds this week. That's it. That's it. But next week, I'm going to lose two pounds. You watch. Next week, I'm going to lose two pounds. And that, that 40 pounds that I just gained like this week, that 60 pounds I just gained this week is not going to be that big of a deal. That 60 pounds is nothing. So you watch. Next week, that, six, that 70 pounds that I just gained this week, that's going to be nothing. I'm going to lose that in a month. A month. That 80 pounds is going to be gone. To me, subscribe. And um, just because this is my weight loss vlog. True. First thing is, I want to weigh myself every single day. And she loves these chokers, man. Amber, she's just like a scene girl caught in the Linkin Park era. And I love it, dude. I love it. It is a little bit cringy nowadays to see somebody with one of these. And uh, when you're, when you're, when your neck and your chin become one thing, or like you know what I'm talking about, where you can go like this, right? You have double chins and stuff like that. That I don't know. Like it, having a choker just seems a little bit disconcerting for me. A lot of people have uh, big opinions on this, wig. but this is just what I want to do. I want to weigh myself every day. I want to see Why does myself. It matter? Like the amount of times Amber's has said, like, "Oh, I just, I just want to do this." Like I don't, you know, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. First of all, Amber, nobody even gives a fuck. Like the fact that you're even bringing this up as an issue is like you're just making your own problems to try to 
have something to conquer. Nobody cares, okay? You've already weighed yourself like a million times at this point a day. So it doesn't matter. And you give up eventually anyway. And you get really disconcerting because you gain so much weight. You're like, I don't want people to know that I'm actually like 600, 700 pounds. Fluctuate. I want to see, you know, if I gain three pounds one day, I want to know what it did I three pounds, dude. You know, I do the day on. prior. So my calorie limit on my fitness pal, they want me to eat 2,700. I think that's too high. That's not bad. 2,700 for somebody like Amber is not bad at all. It actually might be a little bit too low. Um, it, it, it might, if she's saying it's too high, it probably is too high in terms of how many calories she should actually be eating as a woman that's like, oh, what is Amber? Like five foot four, five foot five or something like that. Realistically, a lot of women around that size should eat around 2,000 calories. But Amber has been conditioning herself to eat so many calories a day to maintain over 500 pounds, 600 pounds at some points. So you might be looking at that and going 2,700 is like, come on, David, I don't even eat that in a day. I know, but Amber is like, she's eating easily over 3,000 calories every single day. Not even joking. So it might even be more than that, like easily maybe 3,500, 4,000 calories a day, not even counting the days that she said that she's binged and she's like came on camera and literally said that she's eaten potentially thousands of calories a day, 10,000 plus calories a day from, from binging. So I wouldn't even be surprised that if you lowered her calories to 3,500, I think she would lose weight. I think she would lose a lot of weight at 3,500. And you know how much food you can eat at 3,500 calories? A fuck ton. You can eat a lot of food at 2,500 calories. 3,500 calories is ridiculous. I have done Weight Watchers quite a few times. I also really love that Amber gets on these like fad diets because like what I often see is like when people have, people have a real issue, there's a tried and true method. I have a pimple right here. I hope it goes away by tomorrow. But people have a tried and true method of losing weight, which is calories in, calories out. If you're looking for these like hidden techniques from like Raza Ghoul himself or something like that, some your, your favorite fitness influencer that hits you with the, hey, okay guys, make sure you check out the link in the description. You're gonna get 10% off if you click my coupon code. And guess what? Make sure you also check out my cookbook, which got me the abs that I have right now. Hashtag Gymshark. That's right, guys. I'm giving you a discount, a major discount. Like if you're following one of these guys and you think that because this guy is looking banging that you do think that somehow you're going to get like this guy, you're not. You're just not. Okay, you might get somewhere close. I'm not saying that you can't follow a particular person's fitness program or whatever. But oftentimes I see people going for these big fitness programs or like Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig's, all these fucking big programs because they think that there's a, they think that they can do it through a, a set of rails, if that makes any sense. Like they, they're, they're very linear paths that there's not, you know what I'm talking about? When in reality, it really just comes down to how much you eating a day. Is it less than what you need? No, then you're eating too much. Lower it, go to the gym. Maybe you don't have to go to the gym, walk more for somebody like Amber. It's probably super hard for her to walk. I probably wouldn't even recommend her to walk, but if she did go to the gym, she could do the elliptical, which is incredibly good on your joints. She can swim. Swimming is really good. I think Amber said she likes to swim, probably struggling, get in and out of the, um, in and out of the the, the 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 whatever that thing is pool to get it out of the pool but there are plenty of things that amber can do and i just really don't like it when people think that there's like a fad diet or some kind of like program that can like get you out of it or some kind of like miracle serum that you can drink that will alleviate all your weight problems nah there isn't it's just called conviction and force of will and consistency that's all it is so i actually am setting myself a goal weight by a certain date <laughs> Usually when I do things like this, I always fail, but I already ate quite a bit today versus if I didn't do that. I hate, I, I hate, loathe weight loss guru Lynn. Like I can't. Like she acts like it's like this big epiphany. Like you've said this before. You've said, I literally, ver I could probably find. Tw Dude, I swear Amber has like this, this outfit she's wearing. I swear to Jesus. This looks like my couch. Hold on, bro. This looks like the couch I have right here. I swear. I'm going to take a picture of it and I'm going to like put it up. Maybe it's just because it's plaid, but I swear this thing is not a bad dress. I'm just saying that it looks like, what is this? What is she wearing here? 20 different videos of you sitting on here talking about how you're going to start documenting all your food and how you're going to look back on it and, and it'll keep you more accountable of the things you eat every day. Why do you need to make a whole weight loss Instagram? What? Amber goes through these like cycles of like really, really wanting to do something and putting in the maximum amount of effort. But the thing is like, she's like a car, like a very, like a gas guzzling car, right? Like she's super hyped for it, right? She's like, I'm gonna do this. I'm a great do this. But she didn't have enough fuel to like, she burns out quick, if that makes any sense. Like she has these really high points where she's like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna have this weight loss channel. I'm gonna have this weight loss Instagram and things such and so forth, right? And then um, she'll go all the way up. And if this was like the high point, 
She'll hit the high point of, like, she's going to do it. And then she'll have a rebound where she, like, fucks up or something like that, which is fine. Everybody has fuck-ups. But her fuck-ups are crazy monumental fuck-ups. She'll have that fuck-up. And then she'll go, no, but it's okay because I'm still, like, super hyped up over the progress. And then she'll go back up. But she never reaches, like, the apex of where she was, right? So she hits this, like, new new high. And then she has another fuck-up. And then she goes back. And it's, like, slightly less. And then she keeps doing that until eventually she just hits her median value of just living her fucking life that her default is, which is just consuming thousands of calories. And then she'll do that for like three or four months. She'll tell you that you're an asshole, you're a fat phobic fuck if you tell her that she's fat or some shit like that. And then she'll take herself seriously again for like another month and she'll have that high point again and then she'll just keep doing it over and over again. What? So I really want to follow my doctor's orders. My weight, I swear, like, the, I've, I've always wanted to say that. No, my weight loss doctor. I want to follow my weight loss doctor's orders. Weight loss doctor. This weight loss doctor. What am I going to be eating for the next two? It's, when, I hear, when I hear these statements, all I'm hearing is, like, somebody else told me to do that. So all it's doing is, like, validifying what I already know, which is, like, I'm good. Or, like, I don't need to do too much or something like that. Two weeks. See what I've been eating. How I've been eating. How much weight I've lost. I don't have to count calories. He told me the reason why he doesn't want me to count calories is because he doesn't want me to get overwhelmed and stop this weight loss doctor. Probably is a good reason to like not count calories. Some people can just lose. If you're not counting calories <clears throat> at the bare minimum, you should be weighing yourself because that you have no way of tracking if you are or are not losing calories at all. If you're not at least weighing yourself. And if you can weigh yourself like once every two or three days or like once a week, I know that's super good for a lot of people. I feel like for somebody like Amber probably shouldn't weigh every single day because the weight fluctuations for our girl here is drastic like she has lipedema she has like she carries a lot of water weight so even on a day where she would lose like a lot of weight or she did very well that day in terms of like the calories that she consumed and then she stepped on that scale that next day she might be super disconcerned at the fact that she might have gained weight but that doesn't necessarily mean that she gained weight right it just kind of means that maybe you just held on to more water that day or whatever like some people can just carry more water from day to day and you won't actually see that weight loss until like a day two days a week later and uh, a lot of people have that issue and a lot of people will see that number go up on the scale and go like but i tried so hard and i got so far but in the end didn't matter but it did matter you just weren't looking at it for the long term weight loss doctor i'm trying to stay under 100 carbs 20 under gram 100 carbs so hold up your doctor is telling you don't count calories but he's telling you to count carbs what the fuck are you talking about if i'm being honest it doesn't fucking matter how many carbs this girl eats it doesn't matter like i mean she should be prioritizing pr protein as much as she can but it doesn't fucking matter at somebody of this size like if you're over 500 pounds and you're chilling at 500 pounds consistently and you're telling me like oh yeah i only eat i only eat 100 carbs what the fuck are you talking about shut the fuck up that means nothing i don't give a fuck you're eating 100 carbs like, if you're eating 100 carbs carbs are like the easiest foods to consume calories from because they're like they're so quantity fold and they're so the, the density of carb packed foods and the the, the no, it's terrible. If you're not counting calories, I don't know why the fuck you're counting carbs. Terms of protein under 400 calories. Calories matter. A low carb situation okay. for 400 calories. Swing by the McDonald's, eat yourself a cheeseburger, <laughs> take off half of the bun. My weight loss. Take off half of the bun? So like just one? Just take off like one bun or are you cutting it in half and like low carb I'm low carb low carb counting calories low. it doesn't like low carbs is not going to do shit for this girl like it doesn't fucking matter carb but weight loss doctors are different losing weight to lose weight come along on my journey i want my channel to be focused on positivity weight loss health counting calories weight watchers weight watchers the weight watchers start weight watchers from intuitive What's eating this? intuitive eating weight watchers yet again weight watchers is this a weight loss channel <laughs> That's, that's a question that we need to figure out. Um, this channel is not a weight loss channel whatsoever. It's a, um... Damn, dude, she was in her, like, Ariana Grande era right here, dude. Oh, she got the Xbox controller back there, too? Damn, representing, dude. <laughs> she looks so young here. And she she kind of looks the same. Oh, man, these snake bites were cringy, dude, at the time. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hate As of right now, it's a vlog channel. So this is not a weight loss channel, and I just kind of want to stress that to people. That there are so many people out there struggling with weight and weight issues. They don't even take the time to try to be better. Not only is this not a weight loss channel, it's just a channel about my life. Someone said that my weight loss channel is a joke. <clears throat> I just want to say I'm not a joke. Oh, shit. <laughs> Amberlynn's not a joke. Even though 
every time she's tried to lose weight, she's never fa- she's never succeeded. I mean, she has in the short term. She's had times where she's lost a lot of weight. Like, I've seen at her most, she's lost, like, 60, 70 pounds. But then she, like, regains that weight. Like, it's actually crazy the amount of weight this girl has lost in the sense of, like, how much weight has she lost in terms of losing the weight and then regaining it and then losing that same weight? You know what I'm talking about? Like, how many times has she lost that same 70 pounds over and over and over and over? It's got to be something crazy. She's got to have some crazy numbers on that. Not a weight loss channel. Not a weight loss channel. And I remember when everybody used to say that. Is this Aggie? No, Angie. Uh, I hate having an egg allergy. I didn't know Amber was allergic to eggs. That sucks, dude, because eggs are, like, really good for you. Wait, what? I'm, I'm, sure I've eat, I'm sure I've seen her fucking eat eggs before. Um, I've had egg allergy since I was a little girl. I just ate three eggs, and now I have some hives. It's gotten worse and as I've gotten older. Okay, all right. I guess don't eat eggs. So I'm going to have either, there's two options. I'm going to have eggs Damn. with bacon, which that's something that I personally love. It might have just been, she might have just tried to find a reason why she broke. A lot of people have issues and they know what the issues are, you know, like, I've been in scenarios with people where it's very obvious what the problem actually is, but they'll come up with a solution that's completely absent of whatever that is, and it kind of makes a little bit of sense, so they'll just hook onto it, if that makes any sense, right? And it'll be like, oh man, didn't you have sex with that girl the other night, and now your dick is like literally falling off, and you're like, could it be that that girl gave you some kind of like disease? And you go, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if it was that, I think maybe like this morning, when I woke up, I put my foot on the floor and the floor was just kind of like creaky a little bit. And I think that the creakiness, like, I don't know, like infiltrated my, my key, my chi, and it like flowed up through my feng shui. And I think that's what's actually happening. It's not actually the girl that I had sex with that my dick is now like literally falling off, right? No, no, no. It's the creak. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like some people will go very far in a way to try to justify that. Like I remember Amber was trying to take a step on top of a curb. Like she was trying to walk up a curb, take a step on a curb. And she said like, oh no, it's not actually, she couldn't do it. Like she couldn't take the step on the curb and she was trying really hard. Cause I guess the curb was like, I don't know, man, like three, three inches, four inches at most. And so for a lot, of, for a lot of guys, that's a lot. I mean, not for me, but a three, four inch curb. And then she tried to get up there. She couldn't do it. She couldn't even physically lift her leg. And then she said, it's my shoes. It's my shoes, guys. It's, it's the shoes that are the issue. It's not the fucking shoes. I don't give a fuck what you got on your feet. It's the legs. It's the legness of your body. It's not the It's not the shoes. Stop playing with me, girl. I love eating, and you guys know that. I don't have the bacon now. I have to go to the store and get it, because the store I went to earlier didn't have the bacon. So how are you going to cook bacon and eggs if you don't got bacon? Eggs and bacon is option number one. Okay. Scrambled eggs. I'm going to be <laughs> honest. They sometimes make me feel nauseous and it's because i have an allergy to them so why are you eating middle breakfast let's see why the fuck are you like how the fuck do you eat eggs can you imagine like a guy that's like lactose intolerant and he's like oh man whenever i drink milk my my whole like i just get a hive like i got the bubble gut i just can't really function anyway um i'm just i love cheese i'm just about to body slam like literally three thousand calories worth of cheese three scrambled eggs yeah, I thought she was allergic to eggs, but she I guess not anymore. You guys saw a video from me where I got super nauseous and I felt sick to my stomach. <laughs> Two. I knew a dude that drank spoiled milk and he used to do that shit a lot. And then he used to wonder why he had the bubble gut, dude. Man, that shit was serious, bro. I literally saw this man drink down a whole chocolate milk. That shit was chunks and he was swallowing that shit. Like I saw it. I saw the chunks. Like when I when he opened his mouth to like pour, you know the milk cartons got like little triangle openings. I saw the chunks like flowing into his mouth, and he was like, ugh, 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 ugh. like it was like bricks going down his mouth, and he took a big ass swig. You know when you take a a strong sip of something, and you're not really thinking about what it is, because you could do it with water. Like you could take a big ass swig because it's a fucking it's water. You're not really anticipating any flavor or anything like that. He did that with the milk. Like he just kind of took it and was like. Ugh. Ugh, and didn't register the flavor but then when he went for that second when he went for that second gulp he had the backwash flavor from the first from the first gulp down on his mouth and then he had tasted that like damn that shit was 
oh, that shit was gross. And I was like, what was, was good? He was like, bro, that shit is expired. And I was like, the milk? He's like, yeah, bro, actually, hold up. It actually might not be. And then he took another, like, ugh. Ugh. he was like, oh, that shit is fucking, no, that shit's gross, right? And he threw it away. And then, um, and then I went into trash to pick up his, his milk. That shit was dusted. It was milked. It was gone. It was completely empty. He had swallowed down a whole thing of expired milk. And then, but the school I went to, there was tons of expired milk all the time. And sometimes you would go up there and be like, yo, my milk is solid. Can I get another milk? And the lunch mothers would look at you like, <laughs> nope, you ain't getting shit. And the lunch mothers and lunch fathers would just be hoarding all the milk and shit, dude. That's pure fucking racism. But this dude, for the rest of the day, was complaining about how his stomach was bubbling. His shit was gargling in the middle of class. Like, you know when you gotta be quiet and it's like testing period? All you heard in the back of the room was just... Like, like that's all you just bubbling, dude. And he had to use the bathroom like five times that day. That shit was serious. Um... Just don't drink spoiled milk, I guess. I don't know, man. He swallowed that shit fast as fuck, though. Medium grade A eggs. I'm not the greatest at cooking eggs. That I felt nauseous. Uh oh, it's the eggs. Like the eggs strike right back. After I ate breakfast. And what when I your food fights was, back. I used to have an egg like intolerance. Kind egg of, like, intolerance? Is that a thing? thing. Um, I would just say I have an egg allergy because it's easier to say. Um, when egg I intolerance, I feel like, is easier to say than egg allergy. Egg allergy, say that like four times. Egg allergy, egg allergy, egg, egg, it's hard, you can't do it, can't do it. When I was younger, eggs made me really sick. And as a teenager, it wouldn't do it so much. And now, as an adult, it's starting to happen again. But it almost feels like it's 10 times worse. It's probably because she's eating something of actual nutritional value. <laughs> yes. It is true. That's a fact, dude. Eggs are, eggs are like really good for you, dude. I know a lot of people were like super concerned about the cholesterol of eggs. Dude. Okay, look. I get it. There's cholesterol in eggs. I do. I get it. But for the amount of goodness that you're getting out of eggs, and I understand eggs are not the most like, if you think about anything for a long period of time, you'll come to the conclusion that you're gay. Okay, like everybody knows that chickens have butt vaginas. Okay, and then when you are technically eating eggs, you're eating um like poop, v to poop, periods, poop periods, and everybody knows that those are the worst things, right? You don't want to you don't want to eat those to traditionally. But I've eaten plenty of things that were more disgusting than that. You like cheese, fermented cow teddy milk? Yup. I've eaten fucking straight up animals in my rice. I, the amount of times I've poured out rice and I looked at my rice, I was like, oh yeah. I think there's like, what is that a weevil? There was a couple weevils in there. I'm washing it obviously, but I don't care. I'm, dude, listen, okay. If people got by for like 200,000 years from drinking swamp water and like the worst quality of water you possibly can. I don't even know how some people, you know, I often think like this, right? How the fuck do I not have any diseases right now? Because like for all of 200,000 years, you're telling me that like people were casually walking by with like ringworm and chlamydia on their mouth and that they bred that shit. Like they were just having sex. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like your, your fucking great grandmother's uh, cave sister, she had chlamydia and other things. And then she had sex with that other guy and he had like, I don't know, fucking Down syndrome or something. And then that kept going down. You know what I'm talking about? Like you kept having sex and you just kept getting like super, you had like super um, chlamydia or something like that. Like the clap supersized. And then like, what happened? Like, do we just not have it anymore? Like, how the fuck do I not have diseases right now? Can somebody answer that question for me? Because like, I often wonder that question, you know? But then again, I don't take showers. I mean, I don't take baths. Because one of the reasons is because when, I sleep, when I'm in the bathtub, I, I used to hate it taking a bath when I was a kid because I used to think that the water was going to get in my butthole and then I was going to turn into like a fish or something and it was going to get in my, my urethra. So whenever I went into the bathroom, I would just like cup my, my crotch. Obviously, I wasn't going to do anything. It's not like I had like a scuba diving gear on my penis. But I used to get really scared about that. And even to this day, I'm not taking a bath because I'm not gay. And then also, I don't want to like have you know, fucking liquids in my shit like that. Anyway, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But, um, eggs are really good. Eggs are really good for you. Oh, and you have lived your entire life knowing that whenever you Jesus. eat... Jesus. ...value and... If it is true, Why and is you have lived body? your entire life knowing that whenever you eat eggs, you feel sick, wouldn't you therefore not eat eggs anymore? Not to me, easy. that's the biggest criticism that I see people give her is they're so tired of hearing about the egg allergy, uh -huh. and then you continuously eat the eggs you've been 
Talking that's like about- talking to a lesbian girl and she's like, dude, I'm sick of it, dude. I'm sick of vagina. I'm back to dick tomorrow. And then you you walk in on her eating vagina, you know? Like, I knew a girl, man, I this girl was fucking crazy, bro. I remember I, I was talking to her one time, right? This girl was trying to have sex with me, but I wasn't really down for it, dude. This was back when I was like 20, right? And this girl was like 18 years old or something like that. But she was, uh, she, she had kids. I didn't notice she had kids, right? And I was like talking to her and she was like, I was like, she was like, there was some people in the background. I was like, who's that? And he's like, oh, that's just my kid. And I was like, oh, your kid? I didn't know you had kids. And she was like, yeah, I got a kid. And I was like, how old? And she was like, well, five and seven. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Five and seven? Five and seven? How old are you? She was like, oh, I'm turning 19 in like June or something. And I was like, okay, all right. That, all right, damn, what the fuck? But this girl would tell me she would just casually bleed out of her vagina, like just recreationally. Like she would just be chilling and then just blood. I remember she, she first brought that up to me. She was like, oh, damn, my vagina is bleeding again. Another pair of panties ruined. And I was like, uh, oh, like, are you on your period? She was like, nah. And I was like, oh, um, okay. Yeah, so like, what, what the fuck? What? What are you talking about then? Like, why are you... Is that normal? Are you supposed to just bleed out of your vagina? Is that what's going on? And I think I had later found out that she was taking some serious BBC or some shit like that. That was like ripping her shit open. Like she was trying to be my um, my wife or something. Like she was trying to wife me up. And she was like, I just want to be with a man that knows how to treat a woman right. And you real deal know how to treat a woman right. And then she had told me she had a friends with benefits. That was just like destroying her or whatever and i was like well i'm not trying to be with you if you got a friends with benefits like what the fuck she was like oh i mean yeah you're probably right and i was like i what i mean yeah i know him is my fucking what and then she was like um i'm gonna get rid of him and i talked for a week and like every day that week i kept talking to her she was like i just got piped down that shit was good as fuck and i was like damn okay bro and i only kept talking to her because i like interacting with people and it was just a sad story, bro. Anyway, I don't even know what the fuck we're about the egg about. allergy for like seven years on this platform. <laughs> Take okay, some Pepto, guys. call it a it's fucking day. Been... The rain and rain and petals these drop. Okay. I was recently talking to someone who uh, had no idea that I was in an abusive relationship before. My first true committed relationship. I wanna know what people mean by abusive relationship. Cause sometimes you talk to people and they have very weird definitions of what abusive relationship is. Obviously if your partner is beating you, that's obviously abusive relationship. But sometimes abuse can be like very subtle in different ways. I don't know, dude. I would just, I would, I would stress to see what her definition of abusive relationship is. Is was she the abuser? <laughs> is that, is that what it is? Like she was the abuser. Like every relationship I'm in, it is abusive. Like I don't know what it is. I don't know what's going on. Every relationship, it's always abusive. I don't know. I don't know why. My first like live-in relationship was with a girl named Cassidy. I feel very strongly about this and i feel like it's okay for me to say her name okay. because she's transgender now so she's not cassidy no longer so i'm able to say her name because she's a once was person like we were living together Damn, amber turned a girl gay or turned a girl uh fucking transgender dude Damn. and this and that and i noticed we started arguing a little bit more i still remember the first time she ever got physical memories are kind of like fade in here okay. and there but i do remember us being on the sidewalk and i remember her dropping what was in her hands and she took me by the throat and she started yelling at me and then you know okay. she let go obviously i stopped being like sexually attracted to her a little bit after like two years of being together it started to dwindle it was definitely my fault what, when when did this happen like when did you what what do you what it was definitely my fault i'm sorry what how are you going to tell me that she like physically assaulted you and then you end it with it was my fault maybe i'm just like not looking at the context here like sometimes people will do this thing like i remember i was talking to this girl one time she was like oh i'm date I, like i have this guy that i'm dating and he's like oh my god he's like super abusive and he just used to beat me a lot and things like that and I'm like oh that sucks like when'd you break up and she'd be like oh i'm still with him like what the fuck you talking about what and then I, I was like oh what do you mean you're still with him and she was like i'm living with him right now and i was like oh uh, why and she was like well i love him and i was like oh okay well like maybe not be with the guy that's like physically abusing you maybe I, am i not is that like a far-fetched idea she was like yeah you're probably right but i mean what is a girl gonna do um if you're in love with a guy and i'm like 
Okay, well, I mean, maybe I'm just not looking at it from this perspective. Maybe I'm the one that's wrong here. Usually when somebody beats me up, I'm not trying to be around that person ever again. Usually, I don't know, man. But this girl, I don't know. And she was, she was on dating apps. You know what I'm talking about? She was like trying to, I don't know. Maybe she was just trying to find a friend that was a man that had a penis. I don't know. Um, okay. So Cassidy was very sexually strived. Like, is that even a thing? I don't know. She really thought I was attractive. She really was sexually attracted to me and okay. she always wanted to like have sex. And she- which, which is not a bad thing. It's okay to have people that want to have sex with you. That's great actually. Would literally sit there and beg me. At first it was like cute little begs. It became- yeah, I've been in situations like that. I mean, I'm not bragging like, oh, I got so much vagina or whatever, but it's not, it's not, it's not good sometimes. You're gonna f touch me whether Whoa. you like it or not. Whoa. That's when she started punching me a lot. She would what? she would aim for my belly. I don't think she ever actually hit me in the face. She How does she not remember if she was punched in the face by him? Punch me like around right here a lot. Okay. And she would continuously do it until I agreed to make love to her or have sex, whatever you want to consider it. I was pretty much being like As you can imagine, wow. Casey saw this video and had a lot to say about it. Oh shit. My ex Amber that she's calling me Indonesia. an abuser and a that got my blood boiling because that's not true 100 percent not true but for this video to be posted it it pissed pissed me off everything in that video was such bull that i can't even i can't even describe the bullshit that was in that video now the time we were dating i was when we start da started dating i should say i was 15 years old 15 years old and amber was 18 years old is that true okay damn okay 15 now the thing was she said with the laundry that's a big false big false want to know how i know that because me and my mom would do her laundry me and my mom would go do laundry <laughs> she wasn't getting up to do laundry she maybe did it a couple of times and me dropping it's like a common thing with Am i don't know what that claim is real or not could somebody let me know down below in the comments if that if that's a real claim but one thing I know about Amber is that she refuses to do shit herself, right? Like the amount of times I've literally, like the Becky video, literally describing how she was washing her for a solid year straight. And if she didn't do it, she just wouldn't wash herself. If you're not willing to wash yourself, you're not doing things like doing dishes. You're not doing your own laundry. You're not cleaning the house. And everybody knows that it is absolutely atrocious to be in a dirty house. Like they, relationships can end over that simply. Like the amount of times... I was talking to somebody and this person was like, it just seems really, really crazy that somebody could break up with somebody for not doing chores. And I just thought this is the most, this is like the dumbest take I've ever heard in my life because it's not something as simple as just not doing chores. It is more than that. Like, cause like, these things compile. Maybe it's like, you're not doing chores. Uh, maybe you're not like taking out the trash. Maybe you're not doing the dishes and you're just sitting around all day. And then I'm working, you're working, we come home and I'm doing everything else. Like I'm fucking cleaning the house. I'm doing that. I'm cooking you food. I'm doing all this shit. And then suddenly like, this shit keeps happening over and over again. And then I'm doing all this work and I'm just saying like hypothetically. And then like eventually it comes down to like, I just don't want to have sex with you anymore because I'm not like, attracted to you because you keep fucking like not doing shit for me. And then eventually that turns into be like me not liking you anymore. And I fucking hate you. I hate being with you because you're not doing the things that you're supposed to do. And then eventually the, the relationship ends. So yes, taking care of the house is like super, super ridiculously important. The bag and choking her. I never, ever did that ever do it and i damn well did not her she tries to make herself look good this video that she posted it hurts deep because i would never do that amber quickly deleted her video damn. accusing him of the abuse after casey posted his response that's that's interesting to do that that is an interesting video to youtube speaking up by amber lynn reed what the I've... fuck is this thing what is she wearing right here Admit the guilt you've sown, sown like a misguided basket, basket case of poison sentences. R A P E, rain and petals eavesdrop. I used the wrong word. Rain and petals eavesdrop. I used the wrong word. Rain and petals eavesdrop. I used the wrong word. My mental hygiene has been rotten and stirred. And then, of course, there is the infamous. Bro, I can come up with a better rap than that, dude. Are you kidding me? I kill it. I kill it when it comes to rapping. Yeah, uh. If I'm rapping, I'm capping. I put my dick out and I'm slapping. And you already know I'll be in the house. I'm trapping. Yeah, but not in a gay way. I suck dick until that man, he want to spray. And then I say, okay, put it in my mouth. I'm gay anyway, but only for today. Don't look at me any type of way. Yeah, do what you can. Yeah, I, I look like Peter Pan. 
and you already know that I kind of look like the Sandman from Spider-Man. Okay, anyway. Live stream Mine's when she forgets she's in front of thousands of people and does this. She fart? What? Dude, she looks... Oh my god, dude. What is going on with this head shape, dude? Whew. She's in front of thousands of people and does this. Rain and petals, these drop. Pa. Pa. How old is um, Amber in here? Alright, okay, that's the end of the video. Okay. Alright. <laughs> Alright, guys. That's the end of the video. Um, let me know what you got. Is this the is this the woman from Isn't this the woman from like that TLC show? The mom? What what's her name? Am I wrong? That mom that lost a whole bunch of weight and everybody thought was like super hot after she lost weight. It's like toddlers and tiaras or something like that. I don't know. Somebody can let me know down below. But uh, anyway, we're going to end the video here. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. All those things help me grow in the algorithm. So if you can do that stuff for me, I'd appreciate that. I'm almost 10,000 subscribers. So if you can help me get there, I would appreciate you tremendously. And I think that you're an amazing, beautiful person. If you watch the video in its entirety and you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in paper because nobody uses paper anymore. And I feel like it's a novelty to have somebody whip out some paper nowadays. So I think we need to respect it. The OG, the OG, uh, nobody uses, man, I got to tell you something. I am so bad at writing. If you ever see my handwriting, it's so terrible. I need to have technology, dude. I don't even type. Like if you ever see me, if you ever go on the live streams with me, you'll know that I misspell words consistently. I'm good in conversation, like my language is fine. But, uh, and I can read pretty pretty well, but my ability to write words is severely diminished. I don't know, maybe I got like a learning disability. But I used to suck a lot of hairy dicks when it came to writing on paper, dude. And I don't know, like it was just terrible, man. To be honest, like I think I learned more out of school than I did in school. But anyway, you're a beautiful person. I have to tell you that every day. I have to tell you how gorgeous and delectable and just straight up how, how honored I am to be in your presence on a daily basis. The other day when you were walking down the street, okay, and you looked behind you and you thought that you saw something behind that mailbox and you were like, ah, oh, what was that? What What is that? That was me. That was me. I know, it's so great that you didn't look again because you would have caught me. I couldn't help myself but to gaze upon the beauty of your the back of your ankles or the underneath of your kneecaps. It's too beautiful for me not to gaze upon the deliciousness and the delectableness of your awesome, amazing feng shui, how you present yourself. It's just too much for me to not gaze upon. And if I'm being honest, it's your fault that you look as good as you do. You've been putting in so much work. You've been making yourself so delectable. You've been working out. You've been losing weight. You've been maintaining. All that stuff is like super important. And I'm glad that you're responsible enough to use those things as like motivation devices for yourself. That's super amazing. I love you. I love you. Anyway, um, if you want to check my social medias, it'll be linked down below in the description and the about section of my channel. It's just my Instagram and my Twitter and my Discord server and my second channel. If you want to check on any of those links, you totally can. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.